So we have Cantonese lesson tutoring this morning. It is about 7.30 a.m. It's early. You might hear a lot of traffic on the road, but we're doing our first lesson. So I don't really know what to expect too, too much. I had a trial lesson with this teacher before on the platform I mentioned last episode in italki, and I think that went pretty well. I think a lot of that was trying to figure out kind of what level of Cantonese I'm at. And it was kind of a weird feeling because I've never been assessed before on my Cantonese level. Definitely have for Mandarin because you have to you know, take exams and figure out what classes you're going into. But this is the first time for me where I had that happen for Cantonese. I was going in thinking that maybe I'm kind of intermediate. I still actually don't quite know where I am. So I hope in today's lesson, I get a better sense of what level I am, what kind of materials would be useful for me. Because I think one thing that I struggle with is trying to figure out like what books can I read or like what you know, articles or movies or TV shows are at my level. It's something you can definitely experiment with. Like you can watch a show and figure out if you understand like 80% of it or more, but it's nice to have a teacher now that I can ask for those things. Cause if I ask my parents, they'll just be like, you know, you can watch anything. Like turn on you know, TVB or the news, but that stuff's way too hard. It definitely does feel a little weird for me to speak Cantonese with people who are basically not in my family. Cause that's all that I grew up speaking with, right? I grew up with this rural dialect that I only speak with my family. So now I'm trying to use or learn a more formal dialect, which is the kind that you hear in TV shows or hear on the news. That's a little different than the dialect I grew up speaking. So sometimes there's also this mental translation. I know that might sound a little weird because technically one's just a dialect of the other, but they're so different and one feels very natural to me, whereas the other one feels it doesn't come as a little voice inside of my head. It really does take active effort to even try to translate from the dialect I know to the more standardized Cantonese. I really like doing these Cantonese lessons in the morning. It's just a nice thing to wake up and look forward to. And it feels like no matter what happens in the rest of the day, then I've made progress on something that's important to me. So here we go. So, first lesson, thoughts, thoughts, thoughts. I think it went pretty well. I think the line went by really quickly. The thing that I'm having difficulty with, and I don't think this is on the teacher or anything, it's just it feels really weird to speak it with another person, especially because it's there's, there's a lot of words that either I just don't know how to say in the proper way that I was talking about, like the proper Cantonese, or it's something that I know in Mandarin, but don't necessarily know the Cantonese equivalent of. So there's a lot of this back and forth going on in my head of like, oh, I probably do know that, but I don't know that. It's definitely a little bit of that going on. You do these mental gymnastics. Otherwise, I find it really interesting. There's a lot of differences between the two languages that I knew from studying Mandarin, but I think now that I'm studying Cantonese, it's actually coming out. Like the characters are completely different some of the time. One that really stood out to me is the difference between one and jiao. So for those of you who've studied Mandarin before, jiao is looking or finding or searching for something. Jiao gong zhou is looking for a job, but you wouldn't say that in Cantonese. The equivalent word if you're looking for something that means find is one. Lei wan wan do is have you found it yet. I knew the word, but seeing it written out was definitely very different. My brain is tired. That was definitely a lot of mental translation and mental gymnastics, but I can definitely see the progress even from one day. I think I'll probably need to revisit some of the words and some of the just sounds that we learned today. I think the big thing is just learning how to read it because Cantonese has a different writing system than Mandarin. At a basic level, there are six tones instead of four tones, and the way everything is written is quite different as well. So in addition to there being words that mean different things, there are also just different sounds, and that's something that I'm not familiar with. And something that I think is really interesting is gonna help me learn is to try to figure out what the reading system within Cantonese is. In the next week, I think I'm gonna try to do that. I'm gonna try to watch one or two different Cantonese movies. The only issue is, and I was talking with my tutor about this today, is that the movies I like watching in Cantonese, like the old Hong Kong cinema art house movies with like Tony Leung and all those other kind of old school Hong Kong actors, the Cantonese they use is more poetic, it's more literary. So it's not something that you might encounter in ordinary life. So probably need to figure out like one or two shows that would be good for me in a more casual way. If you have any recs, like, let me know. I definitely haven't watched any shows besides the TVB ones. If you know what that means, then you know what that means. But I don't really feel like watching TVB. <laughs> it's just gonna be the same plots that we all know. It's very predictable, very melodramatic. 
and don't feel like doing that after work today. It's now like 8.40 a.m. or something like that. So I'm gonna get ready for work and switch my brain back into thinking in English. We'll catch you guys next time.